When you receive Jesus, Lord of your life, you are crucified. It's no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. And the life that you now live, you live by the faith of the Son of God. Right? Who gave himself for you. You're no longer living. So there's an operation that takes place. Who hath raised him from the dead. Just like he was raised from the dead. When you go into the water of a baptism, there's an operation that takes place. And you are resurrected. And when you're resurrected, you come out with a new nature. No more of the old. The operation of God, the work of God, which no man can do it and it's not made with hands. The circumcision of the heart that takes place. No longer concerning, the, no, longer, no longer the old nature, but you have the circumcision of the heart that takes place and your, your stony heart is removed and you get a heart of flesh. Or you start thinking like God thinks. Now you can think like God. You can say, yes, I'm, I'm a godly man. That's the reason I like the man, a word, O oh man of God. You're a man of God. You're not a man of man no longer. You're a man of God. You're a woman of God. You belong to him. He paid the highest price to purchase you. You become a man of God or a woman of God. Verse, in going back again to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11, but now I have written, you know, people question a lot of things concerning, concerning their lifestyle and how See, your lifestyle ought to be changing from one level of glory to another level of glory. If you're not changing, then you're not growing. People stay stagnant with their old habits because their mind is not renewed, their mind is not changed. Either they are sitting under a wrong ministry or they are sitting under a ministry and they take advantage or they are sitting, or they are not sitting under the right ministry, or they have refused. But if you are changing from one level of glory to another level of glory, you would never question that your your your, your life is becoming different to the world. You don't, you know, you can't. That there is so much in the church today that you can't know whether he is he is a church goer or whether he is a, he is a, he is a he is a lover of the world. The other day I was looking at something and I said, is this a discotheque or is this a church? Because they call it a church. With all of the traction, the kind of thing, it, it, is, it is so, it is, uh, well, it is, uh, well, that's anointing and that's the power of God. That's not the power of God. The power of God brings the healing and the, and the salvation. And lights have nothing to do with the power of God. It has nothing to do with the power of God. Your life should be... Ch I mean, when Jesus walked into the temple, he, he got rid of all that junk and he sat and he started praying and he said, this house has been made a, a den of thieves which should be the house of prayer. You have made it a den of thieves. He, he rebuked the people because things get so easy and, and the world creeps into the church and we just let the devil do what he wants amongst the people and we don't even try to confront them. Well, there are times that we comfort them, but there are times that we confront them. It's good to comfort his people, but there was a time when Jesus walked in and he found that there, there was a thieves, demon spirits have entered into the people. He confronted them. But there was a place to... I mean, Jesus was the perfect, perfect fivefold ministry. He was an apostle, he was a prophet, he is, he's an apostle, he's a prophet, he is the teacher, and he is the, the evangelist, and he is the pastor. And when he ascended on high, he, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts. And the gifts are the fivefold ministry. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 10 and 11, it says, He led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. And the gifts are the fivefold ministry. And he being the perfect who went around where there was comfort needed, he comforted. Where there was rebuke needed, he rebuked. Where there was confrontation needed, he confronted. We should always, I mean, he was grace and truth. He was grace, he is grace and truth. He was, when I say, when he, when I say he was, when he walks the show of Galilee or when he moved around with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. 
But he was, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And today also he is the same. He never changes. He, he confronts where confrontation is needed and he comforts where comfort is needed. It's good. Not just try to cover up things. Okay, let me show you another scripture. Hold on to this scripture. I'm just going into the book of Jude. The book of Jude, there's only one chapter there. And verse four. Jude, verse four. For there are, there are certain men crept in unawares or alongside, that's what it means, unawares or alongside, who before were ordained into this condemnation, ungodly, turning the grace of our Lord, turning the grace of turning the very grace that we preach today, the message of grace and love and favor, turning the grace of God, grace of our God into lasciviousness, into lasciviousness or with no restraint, excess of pleasure with no restraint. That's what it simply means. I just went through the dictionary and I found it out. I mean lasciviousness. It's excessive of pleasure without any restraint. We've forgotten that there are limitations. We kind of think, well, this is the grace of God, this is the grace period, and we could just live any old way we want to, and people have taken this for a picnic, which they do with every teaching. Even when the message of prosperity came, they just took it off with a picnic. They said, well, we'll take this for a picnic, for covetousness. Not for the purpose of being the blessing of Abraham, where God said, I shall bless you, that you shall be a blessing. You shall be a blessing. That's, for, that's a reason for God to prosper us. That we would be a blessing not to show off how big we are or what great things we could do. So turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, into personal comfort, into just trying to let people know, well, this grace is something that has been just released to us. But the Bible says Jude was one apostle who said, be watchful. There are people who have crept in or those who walk along. That word crept in also means ones who walk alongside. Ones who are settled and who walk alongside. Ones who walk alongside. Denying the only Lord, God. When you talk about denying the Lord, you're, talk, you're talking about denying holiness. Without which no man shall see God. And our Lord Jesus. I always think of the word, when I think of our only Lord, I always think of holiness because he says, be holy even as I'm holy. That's New Testament, that's not Old Testament, that's New Testament. Be holy even as I'm holy. That's very clear in the book of First Corinthians, First, Tim, First Peter, chapter one. So, going back again to the book of Corinthians, Corinthians five, First Corinthians, chapter five. But now I have written unto you not to keep company with any man. You know, this is damaging my faith. It affects my faith. It touch anything that touches your faith. You should say, mine, that's touching the apple of my eye. I don't want, I don't want to just mess around with the wrong folk. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man is called a brother. He calls himself a brother. He call, he's, not, he, he's not somebody who has not known the Lord. He calls himself a brother. If he calls himself a brother, he could be a preacher. He could be somebody who's an elder. He could be somebody who is, has a position in church or somebody who has been uh, once a minister. And I always remember of this disobedient young prophet. God called this young prophet out and said, Go. To, to Israel and, and, and curse this particular altar that they had built and come out and go a different way. And he was, he was told to, to do exactly, he said, when you go, go by this way, 
go to the king uh, go to this altar and curse that altar and come out of that place and don't stay there don't even have a meal or don't drink any water get out of that place this was commanded by the prophet i believe it's in the book of chronicles uh first kings i suppose somewhere there and then we find uh, so this prophet comes and he he curses the altar and the king was there and his people and his soldiers and they got so mad with him and they wanted to arrest him they wanted to catch him and the and, and the power of god so was strong there that the alt that the king's hand was stuck on the altar that he could not take it out of the altar so he said please help me help me and the prophet prayed then the king was released and the king said come home i'll just give you some gifts and you can have them he said no i have been commanded not to i have been commanded not to so he came out of the place and this was and there was a little boy there and he took this story i mean he told his backslidden father and and the backslidden father he said who is this man who came and did this mighty work i want to bring him home he said he went in a different direction and he said he is not going to stop anywhere for anything because the king gave him an offer and he even told the king if you give me half of your kingdom or your house i'm not going to even take it i don't want it i've just come to do the work of god and get out get out of this place so we find uh, this this prophet the old backslidden prophet he went after this man and he I met with him and he said god spoke to me and said that you should have a meal with me and brought him home and convinced this young prophet now god never changes his first command always remember when god speaks something he doesn't try to change it or alter it or try to make people happy in doing something differently god spoke to me saying that you should be if god spoke to the prophet then god should also speak to this man and say i'm going to send you a prophet and he's going to you're going to go to his house and have a meal so the story ends like this so when the man, when the man was the young prophet was brought to the old man's house he all of a sudden had the word of the lord the backslidden prophet had the word of the lord now come this time he said you have done it wrongly and you are not going to live and the prophet came and when he so he had the meal and he went back when he went he was slain by a lion he was slain by a lion and i don't want to experience anything i don't want to be eaten up by by the by the lion or the, or the the one who pretends to be the lion the devil himself many people are wounded and they are hurt because they have forgotten the first command they have forgotten the first command the first command is to love the lord your god with all your heart and soul and mind somebody might say that's not grace but i always say it's grace if you if jesus himself said if you love me you shall keep my command if you really keep his commandments you would love him i love you lord i want to walk in your ways it's to be understood rightly grace and truth grace and lies never came grace and truth and the truth makes a person free and if you have not had the truth you have not had grace if the truth that you have heard has not made you free then that's not the grace of god if you have heard the grace of god if somebody says grace and the truth is not mixed with it then you are not going to be free you are still going to be in the same position you are or we 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 could be we could be so carried away grace does allow us to live a life that does not please god in fact grace lifts us up grace is always bound with truth grace will tell you the truth it's not going to tell you a lie it's going to tell you where you are and what your position is and where you should be and it will help you to take you up to that position so it says a he that is called a brother he that is called a brother be a fornicator covetous idolater a railer a drunkard an extortioner with such a one no with such a one no not to eat i mean it the bible is very clear because it's going to affect your faith it's going to affect your faith let's go to the book of uh, first timothy 
First Timothy chapter six and verse ten. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some have coveted after and have erred, and from the faith, and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, thou, O man of God, flee these things. Follow after righteousness. Follow after righteousness. Be in the faith and be doing the right thing. Follow after righteousness. Not just be doing the same thing over and over again. Not just let the message of grace take us to a position which keeps us at a low, shallow level of living unrighteously after, being, after having received the gift of righteousness. You know, we have been boosted and given the gift of righteousness. We didn't earn it. We got it free. It's a gift of righteousness. Why have we received this gift for us to be living right? We haven't got this gift just to be living our old lifestyle, but we have got this gift of righteousness. It has boosted our lives to the extent where now you can live the life. So you do, people take well, I got the gift of righteousness. Well, the gift of, the gift of righteousness will produce holiness in you. The gift of righteousness will produce holiness in you. Let me t- take you to that scripture. Hold, hold on to this scripture. Let's go to the book of one, or go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter six. Okay, we'll read from verse 18. Okay, we'll read from verse 17. Maybe we should read the whole, because the book of Romans 6 is extremely good. <laughs> you can really be free. Verse 17 on verse 18. Okay, we'll just go there. Maybe the rest of it is homework for you. Verse 17, but God, but God be, be thanked that we were servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. You have, I think we should should go from verse 15 because I remember this scripture was so strong when it came to me some time ago, many years ago because uh, we stop with verse 14 and we think, okay, now that's my standing position. I'm, I'm not under the law but under grace. But then verse 15 onwards, it, it qualifies and it, it clarifies a few things. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. God forbid. What then shall we sin? Now that we are in verse 14 says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are, you are not under the law, but under grace. So the next verse says, Paul says, because people had the same problem in, in, in times gone by. So what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? Now that we don't live under these laws, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, shall we commit sins? Shall we live in sin? In fact, we are under a greater law. Jesus said, you have heard. You have heard. that look, uh, He said, you have heard that you should not commit adultery. You have heard about the law concerning but grace says differently. We are in a higher law. Oh, we've got to say, oh, thank you, Lord, for giving me clean eyes. Thank you, Father. You have heard that you shall not kill or murder. But I say unto you, if you're angry with a brother, you have already committed murder. I say unto you, Jesus said, I, who is I? Grace and truth. Grace and truth says, the same Jesus who said, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden, heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Grace is calling us because we couldn't keep the law but he also has brought us to a, he has elevated us to a higher level to the extent where we, we are spiritual now because, because the law was spiritual, the law itself is spiritual but people were carnal and they could not keep the law. Because they were carnal. But now that we have come into this 
form of living where Christ has forgiven us and we have been blessed with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places and we are empowered by the Holy Ghost and now we are, we are more stronger, incomparable to the people of the old covenant. You're talking about David and Elijah and you're talking about all the other prophets. My, Jesus said, in Matthew 11 and verse number 11, he said, he said there were the greatest prophet that was born was John the Baptist. Right? According to the Old, Old Testament. Let's read that scripture, okay. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Putting all the prophets together. John the Baptist being the forerunner of the Messiah. John the Baptist he is the greatest of all put together. Notwithstanding, that is least in the kingdom of God. Notwithstanding, he that is least, somebody who gets born again just today, least in the kingdom of God, is even greater than the greatest prophet, John the Baptist. We have been blessed with all. John the Baptist was never having, he was never infilled. He was not full of the Holy Ghost, but we are. We have we've been blessed with the Holy Ghost for what? To live unholy? It should have been said, you've been blessed with the unholy spirit. If that was the case, the people would think, well, I can just take grace for a picnic. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom, we are the least in the kingdom of God, is greater than John the Baptist. I mean, we have put all things, to, I mean, John the Baptist never spoke in tongues, but we speak in tongues, the language of the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist never was baptized in the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist was not having the salvation that we're talking about. Saved, all together. They were only considered saved because of their right doing. But we are saved. Born again, spirit filled, blood washed, not of the bulls and goats, but by the blood of Jesus Christ. Incomparable to the blood of bulls and goats. How couldn't we live stronger than the prophets of old? Cleaner than the prophets of old? Holier than the prophets of old? We've just made some things to come by our lives and we just take things for a picnic and finally we think, well, this is the message of grace. The message of grace is for us to live far greater life than the old common people.
other messages or prayer you may contact 0722340440 or email info at believersfellowshipsl.org visit us online at believersfellowship.lk where you can watch listen and download more faith building messages and songs read articles that will strengthen your walk with the lord and confess god's word daily you can also connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Join us for a time of praise, worship and the word at one of our weekly services.